Hollywood's slate of blockbuster releases might have slowed to a crawl over the past year or so, but the rumor mill has done no such thing. And while the vast majority of so-called leaks and rumors that do slip out of movie sets turn out to be fabricated nonsense on the internet, there are occasionally a few interesting tidbits that turn out to be valid and completely on the money in the long run. So while the following rumors about upcoming anticipated movies should be treated with some skepticism, there is a chance that all of these could come true in one way or another. And even if they don't, it's still a good laugh to think about what could be. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 insane rumors for upcoming movies. Number 10, Bond has a five-year-old daughter, no time to die. Now, everyone is speculating that James Bond is going to die in the upcoming No Time to Die, but there is one other rumor doing the round that would shake up Bond's characterization in a surprising way. The rumor states that with the new movie taking place five years after Spectre, that Bond will actually have a five-year-old child with Madeleine Swann. This comes from an apparent call sheet leaked from filming, which referred to a five-year-old girl called Mathilde being featured in a scene with Madeleine. Consequently, it's easy to believe that No Time to Die will indeed be giving Bond a child for the very first time. Now, this would certainly up the stakes for 007 going into the next movie and certainly change a character that has been pretty static for a few decades now. Number nine, Red Hulk will appear, Black Widow. No movie due for release this year has been whispered about quite as much as Black Widow. Speculation has suggested everything from Yelena Belova becoming the new Black Widow to Nat herself being revived after dying in Endgame. But there is one other rumor going around even more insane than Nat somehow coming back from the dead, and that's that this movie will feature the debut of the Red Hulk. It's no secret that Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross will be appearing in this movie, and rumors have suggested that he will be turning into his comic book counterpart at some point in the runtime. Now this might seem a little bit out there for a Black Widow movie, but shots from the filming have revealed that the character will have a cane at some point in the movie and looks a little bit ill. Now this has led some fans to suggest that Ross will be ill in the movie and undergo some kind of experimental process to get him better that of course, in classic superhero fashion, turns him into the Red Hulk. Similarly though, this could just be people reading way too much into one set photo and we might not see this at all in this movie and we might have to wait a little bit longer to see the Red Hulk in action. Number 8, Dr. Loomis Returns Halloween Kills. It sure looks like Halloween Kills is going to be the most nostalgia filled release in the franchise's history to date. I mean, they've even got Kyle Richards to return to play Lindsay Wallace, who was just one of the kids that Laurie Strode babysat in the first film. That's how deep these connections are going to go. However, there is a huge rumor which suggests that a far more beloved and iconic Halloween character will be returning for a future film, that being Dr. Samuel Loomis. Sadly, original Loomis actor Donald Pleasance died in 1995, but reports from apparent test screenings has suggested that the character will be back in one form or another for a cameo. The scene will reportedly be a flashback to 1978 and we'll see Loomis interact with Michael immediately after the events of the first film. There's no word whether CGI will play some kind of part in bringing this character back or whether or not they're going to just get a stand-in, but the rumors are there. And hell, we've seen stranger things happen in the movie business over the past few years in terms of dead characters and dead actors indeed returning to new movies. Number seven, Batfleck dies, The Flash. It's well known that the upcoming Flash movie currently slotted in for 2022 will be adapting the massive, massive Flashpoint storyline. And we also know that both Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck will be turning up in the film as two different versions of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Many fans are consequently assuming that Affleck's return will in some part serve as a kind of swan song for his tenure as Batman. His appearance has been described as a supporting substantial role, so it could be the case that Affleck is getting one more go around to finally do his version of the Dark Knight Justice. He has been great after all, he just hasn't quite had the movies to back up his talent. However, with this in mind, it's also been suggested that Batfleck will probably end up dead by the time the film is over. 
Now it is, of course, possible that Batfleck just retires and that's how he's eased out of the DCEU. But considering that his role in the movie has been described as an emotional one, all things point towards a tragic send-off where Batfleck dies to save the world. Number six, it introduces the concept of mutants, the Eternals. Disney's acquisition of Fox finally means that they can introduce the MCU to the world of mutants. We don't know exactly when they're going to arrive, but Kevin Feige has confirmed that plans are in motion to bring mutants, and specifically the X-Men, to the MCU at some point in the future. Some fans think we might see these sooner rather than earlier though, with the mutants being introduced properly in the upcoming movie The Eternals. Now, there's basically no chance in hell that this movie is going to introduce any X-Men characters or anything like that, but it might be the first time we hear someone use the word mutant in its appropriate context. Given that, the Eternals and their enemies, the Deviants, are an offshoot of the evolutionary process that created humanity, there's certainly a neat in for mutants to also be spawned from this process. Then again, considering how recent the Disney-Fox merger was, we might still have a few years yet before we get any plans in place properly in movies we can actually see with our eyeballs for the mutants. Number five, most of the cast dies in the first act, The Suicide Squad. Even for a superhero movie, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad boasts an absolutely absurd cast, but the director has been very clear in the fact that you just should not get attached to any of these people. That's because he's already confirmed that anyone is fair game to die in the movie, even the established characters, but rumours suggest that he might actually go one step further than killing off a few characters in the finale by killing off a whole bunch of named heroes and villains in the opening act. All I'm saying is don't be too shocked if Gunn pulls a Deadpool 2 and just kills off a bunch of big names in the first 30 minutes or so, or at least the first big action set piece. It would certainly explain how the studio could juggle the schedules and salary demands of so many big names that are set to appear. And given that Idris Elba was literally just recast from Deadshot to Bloodsport right before filming was set to begin, I wouldn't expect to see him in too much of this movie is all I'm saying. Scripts can't get rewritten that fast. Number four, Stu isn't dead, Scream. The Scream series has a pretty big history with script leaks leading to entire scenes and sometimes even entire endings having to be reshot. So it's probably no surprise that the team is currently hard at work trying to keep spoilers as close to their chest as possible and not have anything leak before Scream 5 drops in theatres. However, there are rumblings that Matthew Lillard, who played one of the original Ghostface Killers Stu, will be returning in some form for the upcoming movie. With set photos teasing a return to Stu's house from the original movie, many fans are thinking that he might have survived being crushed by a TV back in that first flick. It might sound daft, but there actually is a precedent here. Lillard back in 2018 revealed that the original ending for Scream 3 had the character returning in this kind of weird mentor role where he was advising a new generation of ghost-faced killers having survived and been in prison. Now that probably wouldn't have made any sense story-wise back then, but given that Scream 5 takes place 25 years after the original, it's not entirely out of the question that Stu could have been released or either escaped prison and is now mentoring another group of ghost face killers. Number three, it will feature feathered dinosaurs, Jurassic World, Dominion. Despite the fact that the first two Jurassic World movies were made years after it was discovered that dinosaurs were probably feathered, they decided to stick with franchise tradition and not update their dinos in terms of scientific accuracy. And to be fair, they don't really have to explain this or keep up with current trends. After all, these dinosaurs are genetically engineered by man, so it makes sense that there might be some discrepancies between how they turn out and how they were billions of years ago or whatever. Still, there are rumours to suggest that the upcoming Jurassic World Dominion is attempting to set things a little bit right by featuring the series' first feathered dinosaur. That's because photos from the set include the Pyroraptor, which is widely accepted to have definitely had feathers back when it was alive. And given that this specific dinosaur was actually featured in the Jurassic World mobile games also being feathered, there is a precedent there that they might continue into this film. 
Now, the one stickler here is that the set photos themselves don't actually show this dinosaur with feathers, but that just could be because they're actually going to put the feathers in digitally in post-production. Number two, Brian is back, F9. Given that Michelle Rodriguez has seemingly confirmed that the upcoming F9 will finally take the franchise into space, fans have turned their attention to the next big mystery. That being the presence, or not, of Brian O'Connor. Brian as a character, of course, was written out of the series after Furious 7 due to the untimely death of Paul Walker. Consequently, both Brian and his wife Mia were absent for the fate of the Furious. But Mia is actually returning for the latest movie, so rumours out there are suggesting that Brian might also be back for a quick cameo as well. With word of Walker's brother Cody, who actually also served as a stand-in for the late Paul Walker on Furious 7, being spotted on the set of the latest movie, it has been suggested that Brian might be returning to the gang for at least one more cameo in this next flick. Whether or not this is a good idea, I'm not entirely sure because he already did get a pretty superb send-off in Furious 7 and Hollywood doesn't exactly have a great history of bringing people back from the dead digitally. Number one, Hoffman will appear, Spiral. Though little concrete details are actually known about the upcoming Saw spin-off Spiral, it is probably safe to assume, judging by the precedent set by the franchise, that there's going to be at least some kind of plot twist madness happening towards the end of the flick. One of the more interesting ideas raised by fans, though, as to what this might be, actually concerns Hoffman, who, if you remember, was previously seen in Saw 3D, getting locked in the iconic Saw bathroom by Dr. Gordon. The implication is that he's going to die, but because we don't actually see his dead body in classic Saw fashion, we should never completely write him out. For what it's worth, Hoffman's actor has actually appeared on the IMDb cast list as rumoured, though because anyone can pretty much change those details, that shouldn't be treated as confirmation or anything close, really. Now, while Hoffman probably won't be back as the main villain of Spiral, you know, because Spiral itself is kind of pitched as this reimagining reboot of the entire franchise, it doesn't mean he won't appear at all. After all, seeing him die would be a perfect way to bridge the two eras of the franchise and connect this to the previous movies in a substantial way. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you put any stock at all into these rumors or are there some that you really do want to see come true? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you genuinely so much for watching and I'll see you soon.